Hello, welcome back. So now we're going on to hypothesis testing of regression coefficients, and we're going to be testing the slope coefficient and the intercept. And the good thing about this class is that we're going to be doing some revision of our hypothesis testing. So let's get started. And we're going to start off with testing the slope coefficient. So we can test whether the population slope coefficient, the B1, is equal to a particular hypothesized value. Now remember, a hypothesized value is just some made up value. And we calculate a T distributed test statistic here with N minus two degrees of freedom. So we know our N is our number of observations and we take off two because we've got the intercept and we've got the one independent variable. Now this is the formula for the test statistic, we take our, our estimated slope coefficient here, our B1 with a hat on top, and we subtract our, our, our hypothesized or our made up slope, and we divide that by the standard error of the slope coefficient. Now, if they want us to calculate this test statistic, then they need to give us these numbers, and we'll plug them in and work it out. And we will actually do an example of this on the next slide, which will help to clear this up. And I put in here that this is a two-tailed test because why? Because we, we're testing to see is the, is the slope coefficient equal to a certain value. And remember, if it's equal to, then it is a two-tailed test. Uh, so to test if the independent variable explains the variation in our dependent variable, this is a test of significance of the independent variable. And this is what, what, what we need to do. We, we start as always with the null and the alternative hypotheses. And I like to start with the alternative hypothesis. Remember that is the one this is the hypothesis that we want to support. So over here, we want to support that the slope coefficient is not zero, because if the slope coefficient is not zero, then, then it, the slope coefficient is going to be significant. So we want to support that the slope coefficient it is significant. And the, the null hypothesis, this is, this, is what, this is what we want to reject. We want to reject that it is equal to zero. And if we look back at the previous class, we actually had the same, remember, remember, remember this example with the same null and alternative hypotheses here. So in actual fact, this is this test is an alternative to the F test. So now the, the rest of the procedure, we know what to do. We know that we know what to do here. We compare our T statistic over here to the critical T values at our given level of significance. And we know the deal. <laughs> we reject the null hypothesis if, this, if, if the T statistic exceeds the critical values. And if we then reject the null over here, so let's put a cross over there. If we reject the null there, then what? Then we can support the alternative hypothesis here. We can support that one, that the slope coefficient is not equal to zero. And if that's the case, then what? Then the relationship between the independent variable and the dependent variable is going to be significant. So let us then try this example. So the estimated slope coefficient, the B1 with a hat on top, from the example in our previous class, that they tell us now is 1.1799. And the standard error of the slope coefficient, it's 0 0.137. So now they want us to test whether this estimated slope coefficient here is significantly different from zero. So that is a hypothesized value using a 5% significance level. Now, I just put in a little story over here that we know that the slope coefficient of 1.1799 over here. We know it's different from zero. Of course, it's different from zero. Of course, 1.1 is different from is different from zero. But what's the but here? But we need to test if it is if it is statistically significantly different from zero. That is our job. And and remember from the previous class, we had the 12 observations. 
So let's start then with our alternative hypothesis, what we want to support. We want to support that the slope coefficient is not zero because um, if it is not zero, then it's going to be significant. And we want to reject this one, this one here, the null hypothesis, we want to reject that it is zero. And this is how we calculate the test statistic. We take our estimated slope coefficient over there, the 1.1799, and we subtract the hypothesized value. In this case, it's zero. We want to see how we're different from zero. So we subtract zero there, and we divide then by the standard error of the slope coefficient. So there is our test statistic. Now, what do we need to do? We need to compare this to our critical t values. So I've put in here a partial student's t distribution table. So on the exam, they could maybe just you know, give us a partial table or they could give us the whole table, but we, didn't have, we don't have space for the whole table here. So I just put in a, a bit of the table. So what have we got here? As we said, we're trying to see, are we different from zero? So we've got a, a two-tailed test. So we can ignore this line over here. We can ignore this top line there. So, and what is our level of significance? It is 5% over there. So we're going to use this column here. So we've got to go down our degrees of freedom, uh, your pardon, our level of significance there, 5%. And now what, so we're going to go down this column and what is our degrees of freedom? So we've got 12 observations. We're going to take off the two. So we're going to be, it's, it's this degrees of freedom here, the 10. So we've got to go down this column, the 5% the, the level of significance column for two tail test, 10 degrees of freedom. So it's going to, that is going to be our critical value over there. So what, what is the, what, what can we conclude? We will see it on the next slide, but let's just do it while we're here. We can see our test statistic at way exceeds our critical value, which means what? Which means we can reject the null hypothesis, yay. <laughs> That's what we want to do. And we can support the alternative that the slope coefficient is not zero. And I, just before we look at the conclusion on the next slide, I just wanted to mention that in some of the CFA Institute practice problems, they actually, I see they often give the test statistic there, and they even give sometimes, you know, the critical values. So uh, we might not even have to work it out there. We might not even have to look up the critical values. They might give us this information and just ask us to draw the conclusion, but we've done everything. So, because maybe on the exam, who knows, maybe they ask us just to calculate the test statistic, or maybe they ask us just, you know, what's the critical value. So, um, we, we're just covering all the bases here. So uh, just one more thing I wanted to say before we leave the slide, I've seen some questions where they don't give us this line here, even though it's a two-tail test. So if they don't give us the level of significance for two-tail test, then we would have to use this information here, level of significance for one-tail test. So what we'd have to do then is, is because it's 5% significance, we would still be using this column here because if it's one tail test, then we're going to have 2.5% there in, in each tail. So we would still use this column here and still get the same and still get the same critical value over there. Good. Right. So this is so we've discussed this already, but let's just make it formal. <laughs> so we've got um, the test statistic of 8.61 it way exceeds our critical value of 2.2. So the, then, good news, we can reject the null and we can support the alternative, alternative hypothesis that the slope coefficient it is significantly different from zero at our 5% level of significance. So there, we've got our test statistic in over there. It's way exceeding our critical value over here. And... So therefore, we're going to reject the null hypothesis. And I just wanted to add in uh, one other thing. I just want us to do another scenario. Let, let's do scenario two now. Let's say scenario two, the test statistic it comes in over here at 1.5. So therefore, if it comes in at 1.5, then we won't reject the null hypothesis. So if, if the test statistic was here, what would we say? We would say the the slope coefficient it's different from zero of course it's different from zero but what we would say it's not statistically significantly different from zero so therefore we would not reject the null right so i just wanted to add that in over there and there's another little block down here that i've seen that they talk about 
in the curriculum. So I thought I, we would just mention it. And this is a feature of simple linear regression is that the T statistic we use to test whether the slope coefficient is zero, that is our T statistic over here, the 8.61, that 8.61 over here. And remember this one that we did so long ago, the T statistic to test whether the pairwise correlation is zero, they are actually the same thing. Now, this is the formula here. To for, uh, This is the formula for the test statistic to test where the correlation is zero. So I don't think you remember it because it's so long ago. So, but anyway, if you just go back to hypothesis, to hypothesis testing, you'll see it there. And R is the correlation. So remember our example that we did in the previous class, uh, we were looking at the return on the market was the one variable and the return on stock B, that was the other one. So this correlation, this is gonna be the correlation between the return on the market and the return on stock B. So if you go back to the previous class, you'll see that was the correlation between the two. And we take then the square root of the number of observations, 12 minus two, and then this horrible formula, hey? and then in the denominator, we've got one minus the correlation squared over there, and we take the square root of that whole thing. So that comes out of the, at the same as our T statistic that we had up over there. So I don't know how important this, I don't think they'll ask us to calculate this, but they might just ask us, you know, do we know this fact over here? So that we might need just to know that fact that I just put over there, uh, sort of with a red line there. Okay, good. So let us now move on. Now we're going on to test the intercept. So we can also test whether the intercept, our B0, is equal to greater than or less than any particular hypothesized value or made up value. And again, we calculate a T distributed test statistic, again, with N minus two degrees of freedom. Now the formula for the test statistic is actually the same as what we did when we did the slope coefficient. The only difference now, everywhere we had Slope coefficient, slope coefficient before, we now have got intercept. So we take the estimated intercept minus our hypothesized or our made up intercept, and we divide that by the standard error of the intercept over there. So let us try this example. So they tell us the estimated intercept, the B0 with a hat on top, <laughs> from a regression equation is 3.78. So let's just stop there for a minute. What does this mean? Remember, we spoke about this. I don't think, we, I don't know if it was a previous class or the one before. I can't quite remember. So what does this mean? This means that when the independent variable is zero, then the dependent variable will be the 3.78, right? That's what this means. Okay, so they tell us the intercept, uh, it's 3.78. And the standard error of the, sorry, my pen is just sticking there. This is the standard error of the intercept is 0 0.63. So they want us to test whether the estimated intercept is greater than 2%. So that's our hypothesized or our made up value using a 5% significance level. So I wrote this similar story <laughs> here as in the previous class. So we know the intercept of 3.78, it's greater than 2%. Of course it is, <laughs> of course it is. But what are we trying to do here? But we need to test, is it? statistically significantly greater than 2%. And again, we're going to be using the 12 observations. So let's give it a go. So I, oh, as always, I like to start with the alternative hypothesis. What do we want to support here? We want to support, like we're saying, that the intercept is more than 2%. So we want to support that. And then the null, we want to reject then that it is less than or equal to 2%. So to calculate our, our, t is test, uh, our test statistic here, we just take the estimated slope coefficient there, we subtract our hypothesized made up value, the 2%, we divide it by the standard error, and we get 2.82. Right, so now we need to compare this as always to our critical value. And now we are on a one-tail test there. Eh? So because we're seeing, are we great? We want, to, we want to support here that we're greater than 2%. So it's a one-tail test. So this line we can actually take out because they're trying to confuse us. So it's, it's a one-tail test. 
So we go and we're using 5% level of significance. It was 5% here. Eh? Uh, yeah, there's 5% over there, 5% level of significance there. So we're going to use this column over here. And we get, again, we've got our 10 degrees of freedom because it's, it's, it's 12, the 12 observations minus the two. So we're going to take, there is going to be our critical value. So we can see that our test statistic here is exceeding our critical value. This means we can reject the null hypothesis, the null hypothesis there, and we can support the alternative that our intercept of 3.78, it, it is significantly greater than 2%. Right, so let us just formalize all of that over here. So um, as we said, the T statistic of 2.82, it exceeds our critical value of 1.81. So therefore, we can reject the null and we can support the alternative that the intercept of 3.78, it is significantly greater than 2% at our 5% significance level. So over here, the test statistic there, it is exceeding our critical value there, the 1.812. So we can reject the null and we can support the alternative. So what I did over here is that I put in the percentages because our hypothesized value, we always put in the middle. And then I converted, we converted then these percentages to T values. So we have in effect, standardized to zero. If we think back to hypothesis testing, which I know it's a long time ago, but if we think way back then, that's what we do. We, we standardize to zero. So we can see then that this 3.78, it's 2.82 standard errors away from 2%. So it's way greater. It is way greater than, than 2%. So we can definitely then reject the null. Now what, what I want to do is do scenario two. Let's just pretend that we're doing a different scenario here. And let's say our test statistic comes in over here. Let's call it the 1.5. So if the test statistic comes in over here at 1.5, then we will not reject the null. So what we will say if the test statistic is over here, what we'll say is this. We'll say that the intercept now, because the intercept would then be over here somewhere, we would say the intercept, it's greater than two, but what would we say? But we would say it's not statistically significantly greater than two if the test statistic was over here somewhere. Good stuff. So that's the end then of, of that class. We had some nice fun there with our hypothesis testing. And I think we're going to be fine with this. And then, so then we'll see you guys in the next class. Hello, it's Tim here again. I hope you enjoyed the class and found it beneficial. We have some classes available for free on YouTube, but we have classes for the entire curriculum. The classes that are not on YouTube can be purchased from us. If you'd like to purchase the classes, please contact us for the pricing, and I've put our contact details over here. You can purchase all the classes or certain readings that you would like. When you purchase the classes, we provide you with the slides and our notes. I've assisted hundreds of candidates pass CFA exams, and I look forward to also helping you through the CFA program. I've put in two testimonials in the slide over here, and we also have a testimonials page at, on our website that you can review. I look forward to seeing you soon and all the best.